So yeah, welcome back to the channel. Um, hope you guys are doing well during this pandemic and everything's going well for you. Um, so today we're going to be talking about the four millionaire habits that changed my life um, and that have uh, helped me uh, gain a strong financial foundation and a good independence. And I think these four principles will help you as well. Um, so we'll get right into it. The first one um, is reading. So reading has helped me a lot um, on multiple levels. Um, so the first way is it's gained uh, insight into stories of other people that um, I would have never come across myself. Um, a lot of these books, um, such as Millionaire Fast Lane, Millionaire Next Door, um, Richest Man of Babylon, for example, these three books, um, they've been foundational because they've opened my eyes to different stories and different paths people have taken towards um, wealth generation. Um, and I think it's uh, essential to uh, read the stories of people who have come before you. The reason I say this is because um, if you can learn from who's come before you, then you're less likely to make mistakes and you're also more quicker to get your get to your destination a lot faster um, as opposed to, you know, try, try, doing it through trial and error, essentially. So um, in my opinion, it's better. Um, and also um, it's cheaper, secondly. So um, what I mean by that is, for example, if you were to go to, you know, a financial planner in a bank, for example, or, you know, um, you take a course online, those these courses and those planners, they're probably going to run you a pretty penny. Or even if you go to a mentor, you're probably looking into the thousands, um, depending on who you exactly go to. Um, but with the book, um, it's a fraction of the cost, if not way less than that. Uh, most of the books I buy are typically under $50. And the amount of ideas that I've gone from them have been, um, you know, paramount and transformative um, in comparison to, you know, going to a financial planner and kind of just shuffling it and letting them do the work so to say so uh with that being said i think that it is um, a good idea it's a good route for um someone who's learning as well because then you decide you you gain your own ideologies about things um and it's also important to think for yourself um because there's so much information out there so you know the more you read the more you'll come to your own personal conclusions and that'll be better because um you'll be um, essentially coming from your own mindset as opposed to, you know, someone just telling you, you know, do this, do that, so to say. Um, it, it's just better because then you, you gain more uh, perspective um, based, on, uh, based, on your, based on your findings and then later your experiences. So um, it's helped me a lot. That's why I put it at number one. Um, so, uh, yeah, I would certainly do it. There are other alternatives uh, such as audiobooks. Um, there are lots of podcasts um, on the subject as well. So if you're someone who's very interested in that, um, then I would recommend uh, doing that. Uh, the second uh, area that uh, or uh, point I should say is um, being careful of the friends you keep. So what I mean by that is um, it really is dependent on uh, your or your financial goals and your wealth are dependent on who you're around. So um, as Jim Rohn says, you are the average of the five closest people to you. Um, with that being said, um, I do think it is important to be selective because um, if you're around someone who's, you know, always spending money all the time, splurging, um, not really budgeting, then you're more likely to, you know, fall into that trap as well and, you know, just not hit your goals. Um, it's not really um, uh, it's, uh, hard um, to pick, but um, it certainly is like an emotional aspect because it might be, you know, someone that you've... Um, respected for a long time uh you've been around for a long time and you know your goals just don't match so uh, i would say that uh, it is it is good to you know kind of slowly develop that circle or at least have um one or two people that um are you know going to help you uh, on this goal um because um over time uh it will compound um, and uh you know you don't want to be looking back and saying you know oh i wish i would have you know just try to find these uh, essential people uh, to help. So uh, I, I think it's good, it's helped me, I think it'll help you, but um, it is a slow process because uh, uh, finding the right people is always you know, difficult, so to say. Uh, now the third point, um, uh, which is um, very basic, but uh, I think it's a lot of people forget, um, is not only tracking, but um, spending less than you save. So uh, for me personally, uh, on my computer, I typically you know, have a spreadsheet and uh, each month I kind of just go by, uh, you know, what is um, what I spent and how much uh, it costs, so to say. It puts uh, things into perspective because um, I find that, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> when you don't do this, uh, it, it can get uh, really uh, stressful, so to say, because you're, 
you don't really uh, have an idea as to, as towards um, uh, what exactly the purchases are um, and more importantly the amount right um, you always hear these videos where people say uh, they don't look at the price tag so to say um, I find it very flawed uh, because um, if you don't know uh, these uh, basic things then it's it's a lot easier to uh, to fall down the rabbit hole so to say um, so uh, I think it's it's really good to um, to follow this principle um, because it's only gonna uh, help you uh, long term um, and also um, if, if you will, if down the road you have like a bigger goal in mind then it's gonna help that as well because um, if you're not following the basic principles it's similar to you know baking or something or making or cooking so to say if you don't have the ingredients in place then you know you're not gonna get uh, you know the dish so to say um, so at this point uh, I think that applies as well um, just being mindful um, of it as well because um, if you do like for me for example uh, when I first did the spreadsheet uh, it was something that uh, it was uh, a little bit eye-opening and um, I want to say uh, uh, not sad but a um, little bit um, frustrated so to say because um, when you get the first snapshot um, it's an eye-opener because you can see um, the categories um, of uh, where you typically um, where your budget typically goes towards um, and areas where ideally they should um, such as you know uh, for investing for example um, or um, if you know if you have a, a goal in mind uh, in the future um, then uh, the budget will be eye-opening uh, in that regard so um, it's it, it just it makes you makes you be a little bit more mindful and conscious of uh, exactly you know uh, where uh, where where the funds are supposed to be and where they are now so um, it's kind of like that before and after shot whenever you see uh, like those photos of someone before and then someone after um, that's why I feel like a spreadsheet is it, it gives you perspective on where you want to go and um, and more importantly it'll it's it's motivating as well because then you have uh, something to work towards um, now the um, next point here uh, for me is uh, has been pretty pretty good it's the one I, I started with um, and it's um, it has to do with tracking but it's uh, it's more important um, for me because um, it's it's really been um, it's been not only motivating but like it kind of it, it, it snowballs so to say and um, and uh, that's in conjunction with the with part of the last point which, which is uh, setting a goal um, so if you have a goal, right, so um, what I mean by that is like, let's just say, you know, two, three months from now, uh, you want to get a brand new car, right? Um, I think that it's better uh, to actually um, have that goal in mind and then um, build build uh, a spreadsheet um, or budget around that because then, uh, you know, there's a, there's a destination, right? So there's, there's kind of like a, a roadmap, so to say, but um, Without that, um, I, I find it very difficult because like there's really nothing to uh, to go by. Um, you're kind of just going day to day, and um, the like the the incentive uh, really isn't there. Um, when I started this, um, it, uh, for me personally, it was really just to, to hit a target, right? Um, so uh, you know, I followed the same path, started reading, um, and then you know, I started just setting goals. So for example, um, if I had a goal to hit 5k in a month, um, then I would you know, try and do that and um, have that goal in mind and, and especially a date because a date, if there's no date or deadline, so to say, then it's just, it, it's, there's nothing, there's no, there's no, um, there's kind of no, uh, no motivation there, so to say, because there's no deadline. But um, with that being said, um, it is good because um, in my opinion, it's helped, it's helped a lot. Um, and it also uh, gets, it gets you to uh, be in more of a creative space, so to say. Um, so what I mean by that is that um, it um, you tend to think outside the box um, as opposed to um, a traditional route when you're uh, when you have uh, when you have that goal in mind. Um, so um, if you can, um, even a small one, it, it really helps a lot because um, your focus is more uh, laser focused as opposed to, you know, um, just trivial and, uh, you know, all over the place. Um, so yeah, uh, let me know which uh, which one of these um, uh, habits, so to say, um, have um, have helped you or you're already practicing. Um, and if you gain insight from that, um, let me know uh, in the comments. So yeah, take care and uh, watch out for the next episode.